Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of the Lab 207 webcast. This is Mr. Kite and I'll be hanging out with you today. We begin a new series titled The Origins of Life. Now this series is going to be going on for a little while. Um, there's going to be a lot of parts to it. Today's topic is Darwin and his theory. We are just focusing on the man himself. So let's go ahead and get your objectives and then we'll start talking about some stuff for the day. So by the end of this video there are three things that I want you to be able to know or to do or to talk about. First one is to remember the basic narrative of Dar remember the basic narrative of Darwin's voyage on the Beagle. So why was he there? What was the mission about? Understand observations that led to Darwin that led Darwin to his theory. And finally, describe Darwin's theory of descent with modification. That's kind of where we're going. Let's go ahead and start getting there. First thing I want to talk about is just Darwin himself. Um, it's really interesting. Over time through history, Darwin has been demonized as this scientist who came to overthrow all that is good in religion and everything else. What really is not known about Darwin is that he was actually training to be in the clergy before his voyage on the Beagle. So he actually did have a background in religion before he became a scientist. Um, after he graduated from um, his studies at Cambridge University, I believe, he signed on to go on this voyage with the Beagle, which we will talk about in just a second. But it's interesting to know that Darwin actually was a man of faith before he uh, started into his studies on the origins of life. Now, it's a really interesting story. Young Darwin, 1831, got the opportunity to be the naturalist on the HMS Beagle. The purpose of the Beagle was to sail from England to South America and then chart the course or chart the coast of South America. They wanted to learn more about it because the coast of South America was not well known at the time. So they were going to go all the way around South America and then complete a journey around the world. It was to be a four to five year journey. While Darwin was on the Beagle, his whole job was to keep the captain company and to collect samples of nature, fossils, data, observations. That's essentially what he did. While the crew was surveying the coastline, he would go inland, inland look at the animals, make observations, collect fossils, etc. And so he spent four or five years collecting data from around the world, specifically around South America, but he gathered tens of thousands of samples, a lot of which are still held in museums around the world. Um, but he collected tremendous amounts of data upon which he would later build his theory of natural selection. And while he was on this journey, there's a little map there. You see that he started out in Plymouth and then he went down the coast of Africa to South America, around South America, and then went the rest of the way around the world. There were some things he saw that were really interesting to him. Um, one of the things he saw is that there were some animals in South America and in other parts of the world that were very similar to animals that he saw at home. They weren't exactly alike but they were very similar. He also saw animals that were perfectly adapted to their surroundings. So it seemed like they had just what they needed to survive in their environment. But something else he saw was animals that were kind of adapted to their environment, but not completely. Like for example, he saw some birds that spent all of their time living on land, but still had webbed feet. And he kind of reasoned, well, if this animal was perfectly created for this habitat, why does it still have webbed feet that would kind of get in the way? So he saw a lot that kept that got his mind going, and most of it was related around the way that animals were adapted to the environments that they lived in. And so he took all of these observations that he collected over the years and started thinking about the animals that he saw and the way that they were, or the, at least the way they seemed to be adapted to their environment. And he kind of reasoned that the animals that were best adapted to the environment would also be the ones that would reproduce most frequently and produce more offspring. So that was kind of like the little kernel of his idea of natural selection. He knew about artificial selection, like human breeders for thousands of years have been choosing the animals that they want to produce certain traits. They will breed those animals with those traits together and then obviously the offspring have the same traits. So this idea of selecting for traits was known. What Darwin did is he started wondering if nature could actually do the selecting rather than people. And so Darwin shows the first evidence of like tree of life thinking. On the right hand side there you see a sketch that he did in his notebook. And his idea was descent with modification. He kind of reasoned that if the best adapted animals to an environment 
survived and reproduced, then their offspring would be better adapted to that environment. And he extended this out over geologic time. He had been reading some work by Lyle, who was a very prominent geologist at the time, and was talking about maybe the Earth wasn't young, maybe the Earth has been here for a long time. And he kind of used this idea of the Earth has been around for a long time and applied it to the natural world and said, well, what would happen if you had animals that were best adapted to an environment passing the genes on that made them a best that made them really well adapted to that environment. So he jotted this thing down that looked like a tree that showed, you know, you've got right here the first common ancestor. This is the first living organism. And then Darwin started to reason that at points along the way these lineages would diverge where you would actually start to develop different species as adaptations accumulated. So you might actually have three different niches in the same environment and over time this one animal differentiated into one line that became one species adapted to this environment, one for this environment, and then this one continued on, this would probably be the original species, continued on until it further diverged. Each of these divergences represents a place where the animals became most adapted to their environment and they stopped reproducing with their relatives. We'll talk about the idea of a species later on. So just to make things clean and neat, I want to sum up kind of Darwin's work real quick. Um, he, may, he made, I mean, he made thousands and thousands of observations, but there are two major observations that are really important to his theory of descent with modification. First one is that members of a population show variation. We all know this. If an animal has a ton of babies, none of those babies are going to be alike. They're all going to be different from each other. So he reasoned that these differences could be beneficial. So he said, all organisms have variation. He also said that species are given to overproduction, meaning that if left to their own devices, most animals will produce more offspring than the environment can naturally um, support. He recognized that resources are limited, so it is possible that an animal will produce a lot more offspring than can actually be supported by a given environment. He used those two observations to make two major inferences, and these are the inferences upon which his theory of natural selection is founded upon. So he said that his observation was all individuals have variation, there are differences between them. His inference from that was that those best adapted have more offspring. So because all the animals have variation, the ones that are the best adapted are the most likely to reproduce in a given environment. And then he said that favorable traits accumulate over time. So he kind of extended his thinking and said, all right, if you've got the best, most well-adapted animals reproducing, over time, those favorable traits are going to accumulate and make the animals extremely different from one another. So in summary, a couple of things to remember. Um, natural selection equals survival of the fittest. Note that um, Darwin never used the term evolution. He talked about descent with modification, meaning that over time a population of animals will diverge into two different species as those traits that help them to adapt to the environment accumulate. And that's typically known as survival of the fittest. Um, over time, natural selection improves the match between organisms and the environment. So those organisms that have traits that match them well to survival in their environment will have offspring that are matched to that environment, and over time they will become perfectly matched to live in that environment. Novel hab habitats can produce new species. So let's say that there's a natural disaster and a population gets split into two different climates or locations or whatever. Natural selection will go back to work, and you will have, over time, one species will become adapted to their new environment, the second will become adapted to that new environment. So where you may have had one species, climate change, you now have two environments, you can get two different species. And the final thing, and this is really important to note, is that populations evolve, not individuals. So if you were to think of a beaver chewing down a tree, a beaver can't just think, oh wow, it'd be sweet if suddenly I had longer teeth and could chew this tree more quickly. He's not gonna grow more teeth right there on the spot. Over time, the beavers with the best teeth are gonna pass those traits onto their kids, and the population of beavers as a whole will evolve the ability to chew down trees better. So re recognize that populations involve not individuals. Hopefully that little, uh, I don't know, I guess dialogue, monologue, whatever, provided you a little more insight into Darwin and his thinking. I thank you for joining us on the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, and we'll see you again.